and welcome to High School Physics Explained. And today I would like to explain briefly the, how eddy currents are formed through the understanding of Lenz's law. And in particular, I would like to refer to a demonstration that is often done in physics classes where a magnet, particularly a strong magnet, is dropped down to two tubes. Here are the two tubes and are represented in a terms of diagram. And what I have is here is I have a tube here that is a of a plastic material. And over here, I have a tube that is metal. The first thing the instructor usually does, he drops the magnet down the tube. And as expected, it falls with the acceleration equaling acceleration due to gravity. So it just drops down the tube as you would normally expect. Nothing exciting. Then over here, he does or she does the same thing, but two weird things happen. Number one, it actually goes much slower. And number two, it actually doesn't accelerate. The accelerate actually is zero. It falls at a constant rate and obviously quite slowly. So what's going on? Well, before we uh, go on, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. It has everything to do with the fact that this tube is a metal and hence a conductor. So everything I'm about to describe to you can't happen in this tube over here because it's plastic and therefore cannot conduct electricity. So let's go and look at our metal tube initially. So here I have my magnet and my magnet of course has a magnetic field around it and that magnetic field leaves the north and goes down into the south pole. And so my magnet is now free to fall. But if you've done any study so far leading up to this demonstration, you should know that when a magnet is interacting with some metal, particularly a wire, then what we had have is we have an EMF generated. And an EMF is generated can be one of discussed in one of two ways. Of course, the standard formula, of course, is negative phi over T. If you haven't heard of that in the moment, that's OK. But that is Faraday's law. And it basically says that the change of flux of time generates an EMF. But another way of referring to it is a concept of BLV. And that is if you have a magnetic field and you have a piece of wire of a certain length and you move it at a particular velocity, as long as the magnetic field and the relative motion in terms of the velocity is at right angles, you're going to generate an EMF. So how does that work here? Well, the first thing we need to do is look at where along this metal tube is my magnetic field going to be perpendicular with the actual metal and without actually the motion. And so the first thing you need to know is that the motion is clearly going to be in the downward direction. But we're interested in the motion of the metal. So relatively speaking, my direction of my, my tube relative to the magnet is in the upward direction which means any of the magnetic field lines that are parallel to that is inconsequential. So we're only interested in the parts of the magnetic field that is perpendicular. So you can see up here, the magnetic field here is going into the tube. So there's components that is heading in over here and in over here. And likewise here, it's going out over here and out over there. So we're concentrating particularly in these four areas. And that is where we're going to get induction and we're going to have a generation EMF, which leads to a current. So how do we establish the direction of that current? Now, this is a two dimensional model. So I'm going to concentrate clearly on the edge over here. That's what the direction of the current is going to be. But being a three dimensional tube, of course, that's going to stick out of the page. And I'm going to have to sort of draw in a moment of what that looks like. But the thing is, how do you know which direction is which? Well, the left hand rule is the key here. And so we have our left hand over here and the left hand is used in terms of induction. And if you understand that you've got lots of lines, that usually means magnetic field. We're going to make our fingers the magnetic field. We're going to show velocity as motion, which is usually a force. So I usually like using my palm as a result. So that's going to be my direction of my velocity. 
Your thumb will therefore represent the direction of the current that is induced as a result of the EMF generated. And that is I there. Now it's important to note that this is actually all three dimensional. Therefore, the angles here between V and I is 90 degrees. The angle between V and B is also 90 degrees. And the angle between I and B is also 90 degrees. So that's just a two dimensional way of drawing it. So let's apply that over here. Well, the thing is, of course, is that I have over here, my magnetic field is going in that direction. That's nice. And my velocity is in the upward direction, which means at that point over here, I'm going to get a current and it's going to go into the page. Similarly, if I look and study over here, I'm going to get the same thing over here. But this case, it's going to go out of the page. If I flip that around, what am I going to get up here? And up here can you predict it now the relative motion of course is upwards so in this case it's going to be out of the page here and an into the page over there now if that's the case obviously my current if I were to draw it as an eddy current it would go in that direction but over here it would go in the opposite direction like so like so and so what we have now is this circular current both above it and below it which we call eddy currents what happens next though is going to help us understand why this does not speed up these little eddy currents act like little solenoids and they produce their own magnetic field and so we're getting a north pole over here and a south pole down the here and likewise we're getting a north pole over here and a south pole over here but now look what happens. What we get here is a magnet that is causing an eddy current that is generating a north pole and that actually is going to repel the north pole that generated it. In other words, it's going to want to slow this down, a form of electromagnetic braking. Now, the faster, of course, it wants to accelerate, the greater the eddy currents a current and, of course, the stronger the magnetic field and, likewise, the greater the repulsion. So it won't accelerate. Similarly, up here also, we're getting this opposing effect. We're getting the south pole over here is moving away. That is causing an eddy current to be formed above here, which causes a north pole to be produced, but that will want to attract it, slowing my south pole's um, acceleration. In fact, it causes the acceleration to be zero. And so as a result, what you're getting is both at the top and the bottom, we have eddy currents being generated that will produce a polarity that opposes the motion of the very magnet that caused it. I have just actually described to you Lenz's law. Lenz's law simply states that any induction causes a magnetic field that will oppose the one that generates it. And it's really important too, that is consistent with the law of conservation of energy. That is, you can't gain energy. And the way to think about that is think about it as if this was going to happen in, in opposite terms. So let's say this wasn't a North Pole produced here, but no, a South Pole produced was over here and this was a North Pole and likewise we got the reverse here. Now I'm clearly saying this is not what happens but I'm just letting you imagine what would happen if this did occur. Well if that did occur the fact that the magnet is already dropping with a with G you now also have so therefore it has its own weight in that situation you also now have an attraction over here so let's call that f1 and we have an, a repulsion over here and we have f2 well that leads to a great increase in acceleration in other words it will speed up and it'll keep speeding up well unfortunately that means you get basically energy in is less than energy out and unfortunately that means a violation of the law of conservation of energy. So that cannot happen. So that's what Lenz's law states. It'll oppose its motion because the reverse means a violation of the law of conservation of energy. So now that I've explained that, is there an easier way to determine the direction of the eddy currents as the magnet moves without having to go through all of this BLV stuff? 
and there is. So here's my magnet. And again, I can draw my magnetic field. And all you need to do is simply remember Lenz's law. Now, Lenz's law, as I said, will generate an EMF that opposes the one that generates it. That means if I want this to be moving down, I need to generate a North Pole over here and a South Pole over here because that will generate a force that opposes the one that could move away. Similarly speaking, my North is heading down, so I need to produce a North Pole up the top and a South Pole down the bottom in order to oppose the one that's generated. Well, we need a coil for that to produce that. And of course, a coil will have a curve like this across like that and a coil over here as well. So how do you determine these directions? Your right hand again comes into play. But this case you use your right hand in terms of a grip like this. And what you do is you grab the coil. In this case it's our metal tube but it can work with any solenoid. And you wrap your fingers around the coil. And if your thumb points towards the north pole of that coil, then your current will always follow in the direction of your fingers. And so in this case, my current is going to be such that the north is up above. So my eddy current is going to be in that direction. And here, of course, it's going to be in the opposite direction. And so by applying Lenz's law, I've just explained how these eddy currents actually formed very simply. Let's apply our understanding to a question. It's worth pausing for a moment and then I will explain using what I've explained how to answer this question. So what we have here of course is a magnet that is thrust up into this coil. And so what we need to do is we need to apply Lenz's law to determine two things. Number one, what's the direction of the current over here? And secondly, what is the direction of the magnetic field that the coil actually has? Well, the first thing we need to understand, of course, is that there's relative motion. So my south is being pushed up. Applying Lenz's law means I must produce a south pole here and a north pole over here because my south pole is moving up. I must produce a pole that opposes the motion. Now, using my grip rule again, if my north is up the top, that means my current's direction must be in that direction like so. Looking from the top, that can only mean it is going in an anticlockwise direction. But what about the magnetic field? Well, if this is a coil, then our magnetic field lines, of course, go around like so, like a bar magnet's magnetic field. The thing is, though, what is direction? Well, the direction, of course, it leaves the north like that and enters the south. But it's important to remember that those magnetic field lines pass through the actual coil. And this is true for all conductors with the exception of superconductors. And so what we have is we have magnetic field lines running through it. So my magnetic field lines in this case are going up the coil because Although we usually say in magnetic field lengths go from north to south, that is outside the magnet. From within the magnet, it's in the reverse. So, therefore, the direction has to be up. Well, of course, that clearly means that the only possible answer is B, right there. And there you have it. I hope that's given you a better understanding of Lenz's law, eddy currents, and electromagnetic braking. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.